بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احببت في الله continuing on in our treaties the study of the methodology of the salaf al salih and the ummah's need for for it and we reach the portion of the treaties where Imam Fozan mentioned after the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَتَّبِيُ السُّبُولُ فَتَفَرَكَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ and do not follow other paths for they will separate you away from his path, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's straight path, Surat Allahi al mustaqim And the Prophet sallallahu said, If tarakatil yahud ala ithna wa sabi'in firqa, wa if tarakatil nasara ala ithna tain wa sabi'in firqa, wa sataftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sabi'in firqa, kullaha fin nar ila wahida, kullna man hiya ya Rasulullah. قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وأصحابي اليوم وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews will break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my nation into 73 sects all of them in the fire except one meaning all of those previous sects they're all in the fire even the Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا واحدة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said except one and this is why you see some of Ahl Bid'ah who are not from Ahl Hadith, they try to say this narration is weak. They try to discredit this narration because this narration is very powerful. It shows that the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, would split and, we, and that's the reality, the walk that we see. On top of that, it shows us that splitting is not something that it's madhmoom, that it's something sinful and that it's something that will cause you to be in the fire and that it is not possible to say that all of these groups Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Jamaat al-Tabliq, uh, the Salafis, Ahl al-Sunnah, uh, Jamaat al-Takfir wa-Hijra, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, uh, ISIL, ISIS, whatever you want to call them, that all of these groups are saved. La, you can't, it, it's, it's, it's la yumkin. Because they're so deep, uh, they've uh, they're so different in their ways. They're so different in their understanding uh, of Islam. They're so different with regards to the method of the Salaf. Their mokif is different. The, their muakif, their positions, are different. And so, for this reason, Ahabatifillah, we're ordered to follow one path. And that the Prophet ﷺ said, wahida. All of them in the fire except one. That's Ahlul Sunnah. And what is great, many of the Imams like Imam Bukhari, the Shaykh of Bukhari, many others, what did they say when explaining this hadith? Or Ibn Hajar al Askarani, well, Ghayr him, said, I, if it is not Ahl Hadith, then I don't know who it is. Meaning that they were referring to Ahl Hadith, Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Ahl Athar, the Salaf al Salih, the Salafiyun, that this. Regardless of the name that the, the Ahlul Sunnah has called themselves throughout time, that they make up the saved sect, Firqat al Najia, the saved sect. And that comes from that hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, as well as other hadith. The Prophet said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك. The Prophet ﷺ said there won't cease to be a group from my nation. Again, letting us know that obviously there's others from the nation of the Prophet ﷺ, others from the nation of Islam, not nation of Islam Farrakhan, but the nation of Islam that would go to the fire, that they're not from that. They're not the ones adhering to the haqq. لا تزل طائفة من أمتي 
There won't cease to be a group from men, from men ummati, from my nation, which is on the truth. No one will hurt them, and no one will uh, who differs with them, except, uh, and and that will not harm them until the hour is established. So that net lets us know in those narrations that you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim that there is a safe sect, Firqa Tanajia. They are excluded from the fire as a, as a group because of their method, methodology, their medhab, their minhaj. But us as individuals on that path, so we have to understand this, as individuals in that path, so for example, someone could be from Ahl Sunnah and still spend some time in the fire. Someone could be from Ahl Sunnah, but then they end up in the end dying upon kufr. Or shirk. So that does not guarantee you paradise and it is not a tizkiyah. But the point is, is you want to follow that minhaj, you want to follow that madhab, you want to follow that uh, methodology, the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. You have to strive your best to learn and understand that minhaj. Shaykh Salim bin Fazan, half of the Allah Ta'ala, he said regarding the ayah that we mentioned, Hence we are in dire need of this path, especially due to the enormous amount of tribulations present, the large amount of callers of, uh, to deviation, and the various means of spreading evil amongst the people. The means of evil are intricate, and they reach people within their own homes, and while they are in their own beds. Allahu Akbar. Again, this shows you how the... the uh, it shows you the danger of, as we mentioned prior to this, about to, when talking about shubahat and shahwat, the, the ways the shaitan comes to you, either through shubahat or shahwat. And that shubahat and shahwat can come to you even if you have a household established on the Sunni, you're teaching your children kitab ilah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you don't know what your son is doing in the depths of the night in his bedroom. You don't know what he's watching, what he's listening to. You don't know what your daughter's doing in the depths of the night in her room, who she's going out with, what kind of activities they're involved in necessarily. It becomes very difficult to control those things, if not impossible. And with that, that means they come into contact. That means we come into contact. That means we're in, uh, bombarded by new ideologies, new ways of thinking, and things that distort the Islamic principles, the pristine Islamic principles. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Al mar'i al adina khalilihi," كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, that a person is on the religion of their friends. So we don't know if your, if the friends of your children, are they on the Sunnah? Are they and encourage them to do to do good thing and right righteousness? You know, are your friends on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم? Are they encouraging you to do good? Or are they encouraging you to go astray? So this is very important that to know that from many various ways the shaitan is going to come to you and try to deviate you from that path, from the minhaj. Likewise, that is from uh, shubahat and shahwat. So it could come through our desires, through pornography, through zina, through adultery, through things that encourage masturbation, to whatever the case may be, that it comes to you as shahwa, looking at haram, enticing you to go to the haram. That's how the shaitan gets you through your shahwat. Or perhaps you're tested with the thing of drugs. It's not just, it doesn't have to be sexual only. Some people are tested, they want to have that glass of wine. They want to smoke that weed. That's a big fitna. And I'm sure for many new Muslims, that is a big fitna, or even Muslims that are, are uh, born Muslims and, and around the world. It's a big fitna to have these trials, uh, that, that these tests that come to you. You're used to that behavior. So you just want to relax with some weed and put on some nice jazz. You want to uh, have that glass of wine or that beer or whatever the case may be. All of it is muharram. All of it is going to lead you astray. All of it's going to lead you away from Allah Azza wa Jal. 
all of it is a way the shaitan comes to trap you and trick you. And the shaitan can bring that right into your homes, through your television, through your computer, through your mobile devices. And in various ways, walhamdulillah. Then the Shaykh says, So there are a large amount of callers of deviation and the various means of spreading evil amongst the people. The means of evil are intricate and they reach people within their homes and while they're in their own beds. These means call them to evil. They call them to indecent deeds. They call them to forbidden actions. And they call them to ideological deviation. This is what we were just discussing. Which they label as vast understanding and culture. Allahu Akbar. They say that people should not remain close-minded and extreme. So this is a big fitna. A big fitna that we face, Ahabatullah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and bless us with ikhlas with the bad. Anything I said that was correct, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the Shaitan. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa Sahbi wa Sallam.